Mm-hmm. So right now we're under lockdown and your favorite pizza place closed so you can't get your gourmet style brick oven type pizza. Fear not, I have you covered. I'm gonna show you how to do that right at home and following a few key steps, you can get that same gourmet style pizza. Now I'm gonna make the recipe in this video exactly how I would make it myself, but I will give you the different alternatives, um, different ingredients you could use to achieve similar results. Um, to start off, let me tell you one time, it have two things that is make or break a pizza for me. And that is one, the crust, and two, the sauce. So I'm gonna show you how I just make my crust and how I just make the sauce. Okay, so jumping right into the dough um, slash crust. As you would see, I have two brands of flour. Now this one, you will be familiar with. This is the Ibis all-purpose flour. And I went through the whole process of doing the whole flour comparison. And you know, Ibis is one that I use regularly. This video is not sponsored. I'm not being paid to say this. This is what I would usually use when I'm making pizza. And for my latest iteration of this recipe, because uh, it's something that, you know, I keep updating as time goes by, I like to use half all-purpose and half double zero flour. Now, double zero flour is a finer grain, and it is not something that you would typically find in groceries in Trinidad and Tobago. If you know of any places that sell it, uh, please link it in the comment section below. But uh, this particular brand I get at All Italian. Um, All Italian is in Port of Spain. Um, I will post a link to the Facebook page in the video description as well. So, as I said, I like to use half double zero and half all-purpose flour. And I find that it's got a nice stretchy dough when I do the half and half. So we jump right in to making the dough. First off, we want to put the yeast to bloom. So we're going in at one teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of yeast. Get this little stir. So the sugar gives the yeast something to feed on. And it's going to take about five minutes or so for the yeast to get nice and frothy and bubbly. We're going to add it to the dry ingredients and make the dough. I'll go in half and half with the flour. So I'm going in with one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. One and a half cups of the double zero flour. You want to add a pinch of salt. And as I mentioned before, the combination of the all-purpose and the double zero really gives the dough a nice kind of elastic -y finish, but it also allows me to roll the dough out real thin. So I got a nice thin dough, but it's not like biscuit. It's a real thin dough, but still chewy. And I don't know if that making sense, but at the end of this video, or by the time we reach the end of this video, I would demonstrate what I mean. You would see what I'm talking about. The yeast nice and bubbly and frothy, as you can see. So now I'm just gonna add it in. And combine. And as you would notice, I didn't add any fat to this dough. No oil, no shortening, no butter. And I mean, this is something I've experimented with over the years. And I find that it's get the best dough or the best pizza crust without adding any fat. And I really had a shout out my partner, McKessie, for showing me how to knead dough. Um, back in the day, back in the 90s, we used to run a little pizza business out of my mother's kitchen in Mova. And yeah, we used to do pretty good, you know. Every Friday and every Saturday, we would come out and sell pizza up our board out on the pavement. And people from the area used to come and patronize. And started off real small. And then it started to grow like taxis passing on the street with a CD sign. And then you know, a taxi driver would have stopped and buy a quick slice, we used to sell by the slice. And it started to grow in popularity. So much so that we used to get orders. It's like during the week, you know, I might be on the taxi stand waiting for a taxi and somebody will pull up and be like, hey, all they selling this weekend? And be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll be like, all right, I'm passing for a pineapple and a sausage. And you know, started to sell whole pizzas rather than just by the slice. So, you know, we did, we did good business and sometimes I really wish that we had continued with it, but you know, 
All that was part of the journey, man. All that is part of the journey. So shout out to my brethren, Makesi, Akil, Anthony, and of course Marlon, aka Yogi. Uh, he is no longer with us. He passed away a few years ago, but that was the crew. So I'll history for you all day. So I'm gonna put this onto my surface and I'm gonna knead this for eight minutes until it comes to a smooth ball. And then we're going to cover it, let it proof for about 45 minutes to an hour. But in the meantime, while it's proofing, I'm gonna give you the second most important thing when it comes to pizza and that is the sauce. And if you can't put your hands on double zero flour, there's no worries. Just use full all-purpose flour for this recipe and you'll still get great results. All right, so that is our eight to 10 minutes on the kneading. You have a nice smooth ball going on here. So just gonna put it into the bowl, cover it and let it rest for, as I said, 45 minutes to hour. But now let's move on to making the sauce. So to build the sauce, I'm using fresh aromatics, of course, um, purple onion, uh, only because this is what I have right now, but if you have regular yellow onion, use that. You want a large one and a head of garlic. Um, I would say roughly about 12 cloves. So you want a very fine dice on the onions. And I'll show you how to achieve a fine dice with a little trick that I learned on YouTube. So cut your onion in half, you put it down like this. And then what you're gonna do is cut along these ridges on the onion. So cut it like this. Right. And now all you need to do is cut like that. And as you can see, in a nice fine dice on the onions. Just kind of follow the curvature of the onion. Slice. Alright, so for the sauce, starting with a little bit of oil in the pan, get that nice and hot over a medium flame. And now we're gonna go in with the onions. And what we want to do is saute these until it goes translucent. So it'll take about a minute or two over a medium flame. All right, so now that we have some nice color going on the onions, we're gonna season with a little bit of salt, some black pepper, going to add our garlic. We're gonna let this saute for another minute or so. So right about now, we're ready for the next ingredient, which is tomato paste. Now, please do not substitute ketchup for tomato paste. They are two totally different products, so Tomato paste, not ketchup. I'm gonna add this in, and there's 375 milliliters of tomato paste. And we're not going to let any of this waste. I'm gonna fill this up with water and add it to the pot. So in with the water. Give that a stir. Now add in some dry basil. Stir that in. And I'm gonna cover this and let it cook for about 20 minutes. Now the good thing about tomato paste, or the great thing I should say about tomato paste, is the longer that you cook it, is the more flavor that it will develop. So if you wanna let this go for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, by all means, be my guest. But at the 20 minute mark, we should be good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about achieving that whole brick oven slash gourmet style finish that we're going for in this recipe. So typically when you're making a pizza at home, you would roll out your dough, put your sauce on, tray ingredients on, and put it in the oven and let it bake for a required um, amount of time. This process is a little different. We're going to try to achieve the brick oven finish by using extreme heat the same way 
a brick oven works. But the thing is, if we just throw it into the oven at extreme temperatures, all that's going to happen is the cheese is going to burn, your ingredients are going to burn, and more than likely, your dough not going to cook. So, what we're going to do is cook the dough first on the stove top before we put it in the oven. And that's a little trick that I picked up online, so I'm sharing it with you. Now, I am using a tower for this recipe, this video, but if you don't have a tower, a frying pan will work. Also, if you have a pan like this, then you can get even extra fancy and go for a kind of flatbread style pizza. What you're looking for is anything with a large flat surface that you could cook the dough on. Okay, so the purpose of going through this step is really to cook the dough before it goes into the oven. We're going to make sure that the underside of the dough is cooked right through and that's going to take about a minute and a half on the stove top. Flip it over and cook the top side for about 30 seconds. So we just par cooking the top side and then we're going to finish it off in the oven. Now the oven is going to be set at the highest that the oven could go at, highest temperature and we're using the broiler setting on your oven. You're going to stick it right up under the broiler. So for me, that's the top shelf. Stick it right to the top. It's going to cook the dough, melt the cheese, cook the toppings, and get everything that nice, gourmet style that we're looking for. And if you don't believe me, just watch. All right, so our dough has risen. It's going to punch the air out. And I mean, this is a lot of dough. So it could make about, I would say, six to eight pizzas from this amount of dough and the great thing about this is you could use what you want and stick the rest in the fridge and you have dough to make pizza whenever you feel like making pizza so it's gonna rip off a piece here and it is about all you need you know it's like a little handful sprinkle the surface with a little bit of flour All right, so I have my tower heating up there. We're going to move to tower side now and cook this dough. I'm gonna rest my dough on. And like I said, this is a quick thing. This is not gonna take long at all. As long as it starts to bubble up and you get a nice little color on the underneath, then we're good to go. Move it around a little bit so it don't stick. Of course, you wanna be careful because this is hot. All right, so the dough beginning to swell, so I know that it's cooked on the underside. I'm going to show you the underside. So you see you have a nice color going on there. I'm just going to flip it. And again, no more than 30 seconds on this side because we don't need it to cook right through because it's going to finish cooking in the oven under the broiler. So I think we're good here. I'm going to switch off the heat. Flip it over. All right, so I'm transferring the dough onto my baking tray. You don't want to oversource this at all. So two tablespoons is enough for a pizza this size. You don't want the thing swimming in sauce because if you add too much sauce, then the cheese is going to just slide off the pizza. It's going to be wet. We don't want that. And because we're going for that whole gourmet style pizza, I'm using mozzarella cheese. If you don't want to use mozzarella, feel free to use, you know, your regular cheddar. If you want to use goat cheese, go ahead. A goat cheese pizza that tastes real good. And of course, at this point, the toppings is whatever you like. You know, whatever you feel for, feel free to add what you want. Again, at this point, it's really whatever you like. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I prefer a veggie pizza over a meat pizza any day. I, if I had to be honest, I really don't like meat pizza. I'll tolerate it. You know, you put a meat pizza in front of me, I'll eat it. But it would never be the thing that I would go for first. Not a fan of meat on pizza at all. And the final touch to put on this is a drizzle of olive oil. And important to the overall flavor as well, it's a little bit of seasoning of salt and black pepper for the veggies. And seasoning the veggies is gonna bring out each of their flavors. So you're gonna get, you know, nice flavor from the onions, 
the mushrooms and the sweet pepper. Okay, so that is it. Into the oven, five minutes under the broiler at full whack. All right, five minutes later, and I mean, look how we look in here now. The cheese perfectly melted, veggies perfectly cooked. You have that nice color going on on the crust of the pizza. Add a little bit of pepper flakes. All right, so now going in for the cut. You should have a nice little crisp going on. So like I said, we have a nice thin crust pizza, but as you can see, it's not biscuity in the, in the sense that it's hard and you still get that droop from it. A pizza known for, you must, get the, you must get the droop. You must get that droop. Where's pizza without the little droop at the peak? You must have that droop. The crust, cooked at the bottom. Got a nice droop going on. Going in for a taste. Mm-hmm. It's a nice thin dough, but it's chewy. It's not brittle at all. So, see that little? Make sure it's ripping. It's not breaking apart like it's a biscuit. And that's what we're going for. So yeah, the place might be locked down. You might be able to go out and buy your favorite pizza, but you could try this recipe and make it at home. You know, if you're quarantining with your quarantine bay, it's a nice little, you know, date night special. Bring out a glass of wine. You know, you have your nice gourmet style pizza. Make a little event of it. Or you're home with the family and you want to make some pizza for the children. Yeah, man, you could make a few pizzas let them top it with the favorite toppings and you have a nice little pizza party going on, of course, within the COVID regulations. Now, this is not the Goodfellas secret recipe. Of course, I can't show you that because if I show you that, Anthony, Kessie and Akil go kill me for that one. So, hard luck there. But trust me, this is our boss recipe. If you try it and you like it, you know, let me know. If you like this video, Give the video a thumbs up, give it a share, share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do so. Of course, a link to the full recipe will be posted in the video description. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do so. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.